Coming up on today's FNN, we spend the day with the person in charge of all of Michigan schools. Plus, we learn about all of the work that goes into feeding students. And we get you caught up on the latest from EK Athletics. Stay tuned for all that and more because FNN starts now. Happy Friday, Falcons. I'm Zaya Field. And I'm Naya Holly. Since last year, students have been treated to free meals at school thanks to the Michigan Free Meals program. But many still do not know about all of the work that goes into what they are eating. FNM reporter Owen Renwick went out into the kitchens of Kentwood Public Schools to find that answer. Kentwood Public Schools provides thousands of free meals to students. A study conducted by the Pediatric Journal states most people under the age of 18 severely misunderstand what goes into their food. The decision that goes into school lunches are not simple. I sat down with Mr. Zurt, the Director of Child Nutrition, through all Kentwood schools to figure out what are those exact decisions. So one of the things that we try and promote is buying locally. So per the USDA, everything is bought in America, has to be bought in the U.S. We try and get as much Michigan-made stuff, especially produce, as we can when it's in season. Um, and then the, our what we call our broadline distributor, so the one that delivers food to campus, the, um, is Gordon Food Service. Uh, they're based right here in Grand Rapids. Um, but as you've know, you may have noticed in the high school and at Valleywood Middle School, we now have two hydroponic gardens. Uh, so we're growing a lot of our own vegetables as kind of a pilot program uh, for the near future. Initiatives such as the hydroponic gardens allow students to be able to enjoy the lunches while still get the nutrition they need. Though lunches may be free for all students, it is important for students to understand what is in the food they are eating. I spoke with Mr. Davis in the East Wing Cafeteria to find out what goes into all school meals. Once seven o'clock hits, I help out with the breakfast kiosk that's over by the uh, bus entrance. Um, it's available for kids that you know are in a rush, that don't want to uh, come to the cafeteria. You know, just quick grab and go. Um, and then uh, once breakfast is done, I come back. And depending on what my workload is in the office, I'll either finish a little bit of that or I'll just get straight to lunch and start going, uh, start making lunch for, you know, our first lunch is at 10.37. And um, I just try to get everything in between eight o'clock to that time. Information is one of the most important needs for students, but staff as well. Staff being able to listen to students is vital for future plans to help students with their needs. Mr. Zur talked about his plans on how to have students be able to input school lunches. So I'm working with our dietitian, with our leadership team to create a Student Nutrition Advisory Council. Um, this is still very much in the works, kind of in its infancy, uh, but at the end of the day our goal is that we will be meeting with all grade levels um, and soliciting feedback on what students like, what they want to see served, and how that then um, gets implemented into our menus. Thanks to the Michigan Free Meals program, students have been able to eat what they need, and thanks to the efforts of the staff, students have also been able to request the foods that they want. At EK, I'm Owen Renwick. Until the advisory council is formed, you could always talk to your local lunch staff if you have any ideas. They are always willing to talk. Last month, EK celebrated the visit of State Superintendent Dr. Michael F. Rice. Dr. Rice is in charge of the state's Department of Education, reporting directly to Governor Whitmer. FNM reporters Julie Islas and Nuha Hussain spent the day with Dr. Rice to get his take on one of the most pressing issues in education, student mental health. Superintendent Michael Rice began his career in public education in Washington, D.C., where he taught high school French, founded and coached an award-winning speech and debate program. During his visit, AP ambassadors gave him a tour of EK, and as I personally spoke with Dr. Rice, he highlighted the need for mental health support in schools. While debates over mental health funding rages on, Dr. Rice expresses that not every adult is qualified. Schools are places where there are trained adults in children's mental health, and if there aren't, there should be. Because even if you are deeply involved, in your, you're still not necessarily a trained mental health professional. The CDC's 2021 Youth Risk Behavior Survey emphasizes the growing need for mental health support in schools. Their survey found that high school students experiencing symptoms of depression increased up to 40% over a 10-year period. Unfortunately, the Michigan Department of Education reports a significant drop in mental health and safety funding for 2025, exceeding over $300 million. Dr. Rice is tired of fighting for funding and believes these services are essential. And the fight for children's mental health funding is an every-year fight. And we've got to get it to a point 
where it's no longer an every year fight, where it's considered normal to fund the helping professionals. The National Library of Medicine disclosed that one major reason for untreated depression is the failure to diagnose or identify symptoms. School counselor Mr. Mitchell tells me EK lacks resources, with only one nurse who refers students to their primary care. Dr. Rice's commitment to mental health resources is crucial in addressing the possible expansion. And it's in school where we have, or should have, guidance counselors and social workers, school psychologists, school nurses, who can help work with our young people and, and help strengthen them as they, as they grow into who they are supposed to become as adults. Dr. Rice's visit provided valuable insight into the importance of mental health in education. Contact Nurse Trista for more details on our school's resources. At EK, I'm Julie Islas. Thank you, Dr. Rice, for your leadership and dedication for schools all around Michigan. Dr. Rice was not the only big visit that EK has had recently. Last week, EK alumni and current reporter at WLNS in Lansing, Daylin Huff, returned to chat with students about her life as a TV news reporter. FNN's Andrew Warren spent the afternoon with her. Here at EK, we have a lot of different things that we are interested in, like sports, acting, and fine arts. But have you thought about journalism? Last week, a former Falcon made her return to EK to talk about just that. EK alumni Dalen Huff visited EK to talk about being a journalist and what it takes to be in the world of a reporter. It took me a while to get out of my shell um, and to find my confidence. And I know a lot of um, still people that I work with don't have that confidence yet. And it's very important, you know, to find yourself and to be eager to speak to different people and to learn different things because, I mean, you're not going to know unless you talk to other people. Like I said, everyone has a story to tell. There are so many things that go into being a journalist. Some of them are basic, like making sure that your facts are correct. But others can be a little intimidating, like talking to strangers and being on camera. Dalen says to young journalists, when you find a story, make sure you commit to it and give it everything you got. Just get out there. Find stories. There's a story everywhere. Push different ideas and see, you know, what hits the head. Senior Erica Large attended Dalen's talk and was able to ask questions about what her future would look like as a journalist. After the talk, Dalen stopped by the FNN studio to watch Erica record the sports report and offered her some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Erica says that it was a great experience and it really helped her see what her future would look like as a journalist. Daylin was really, really helpful. She actually saw me record my first show, my first last show. So she critiqued me. She, she gave me tips on like how to speak and how to, how to breathe because I don't, I run out of breath every time. And yeah, she's now like, I can consider herself as my mentor. If you're interested in journalism as a future career, consider signing up for FNN this spring. At EK, I'm Drew Warren. That wraps up your news today, Falcons. Now let's send it over to Erica Lodge for your EK Sports Report. What's up, Falcons? It's your girl, Erica, and this is your EK Sports Report. First up, let's hit the links with Girls Golf. The girls' golf season officially came to an end Tuesday night with the team's end-of-the-year banquet. The team reflected on a season of ups and downs, and head coach Mike Catalar said that looking back on this season, it was all about growth. Yeah, this season, um, looking back on it, um, it was great. Um, we had four players who have actually never played varsity golf before. So I kind of look at it as a season of opportunity and growth and education. Um, it was cool for those girls, for some of them to come out from the JV level and learn what varsity golf is about and try to challenge themselves at that level. So I look back and I just see a lot of positive growth that happened and great experience that they gained. A bright spot for this team was the play of senior Kimi Kozo who received all OK Red Conference honors after a great year earning herself a spot in regionals. But sadly, due to a collarbone injury, she wasn't able to take part. She says that during the season and the whole recovery process, her support system has been there every step of the way. It's been very helpful in and out of practice. I've always gotten like checked up on and made sure I get like food and sleep and doing well academically and just making sure everything's all in order. Overall, the team knows they have room to improve, but they are also celebrating their successes. 
Next up, we head to the tennis courts with our boys' tennis team. They have had a lot of improvement since last year with the help of new coach Chad Van Houten. Van Houten says that the hardest part of this season was competing against a good conference and having a young team. Uh, hardships for us, uh, we had some injuries, which are always hardships whenever you play any sport. Um, but also we play in a really good conference and we have a very young team. Uh, and so uh, we're playing a lot of schools with a lot more experience than us. However, we feel that's going to start to shift next year when all of their seniors graduate and our younger core uh, starts to become more experienced, right? As far as um, successes, uh, we had probably our best showing at regionals that we've had in, in uh, many years. Uh, taking a higher place than anyone would have predicted uh, when we first went there. I had the opportunity to talk to Quan Cheatham about this tennis season and some of the challenge he was attempting to overcome. My personal goal over the season was simply, uh, I, when looking at a, like a sport like this, you typically see a predominantly white population when playing the sport. Um, and you do get people of color, so you know, being one of the one of the few black boys on the team, uh, representing who I am and where I come from was my proudest thing. Overall, our boys are trying to focus on mastering the art of the sport and their craft. With that, more wins will come. That does it for today's sports report. I'll see you back here next week. Now let's flip it back to the day. Thanks, Erica. Now let's wrap up this week's show with a new segment that I'm bringing to FNN. She puts her own spin on the hot ones, and today Erica Large sits down with Nemo Clay to chat about senior year and to see who can survive some of the spiciest sauces out there. What's up, Falcons? It's your girl Erica. And I'm Nemo. And I'm Zaya. And we're doing Falcon Flame. What Falcon Flame is, is I'm going to be asking them a series of questions, and they are going to be Answer your questions, they're gonna eat the chicken first and then they're gonna sauce it up. First question is, how is your senior year going so far? My senior year has been pretty good. Like, I'd say that um, I've made a lot of new friends like over the yeah. summer. Um, yeah, I love all the memories that I've made, like summertime up until now. And I've been like applying to colleges and stuff like that, you know, go green, go white. Same here, my senior year has been good, applying to colleges, um, getting into commentary for our football and basketball teams, my documentary, um, and just spending time with friends as much as possible. Okay, guys, go ahead and take a bite of your chicken. Thank you. How is it? Bust. It just needs some sauce. Mm -hmm. Real bad. Okay, yep. we, we have the sauce. Oh. oh. Because you guys are seniors, we do want to know what are your fondest memories from your high school experience from freshman year until now? I would say last year when we got second in the state or our MAB awards. That was a really yeah, core awesome. memory. I really don't know. I like all my memories here. Period. I really don't have one. I have many. Now that they have answered two questions and they've ate it plain, they're gonna do one <coughs> drop of the hot sauce. So. Dang! Poop. Okay. I got a little zing to it. Oh shoot, wait. Work, no reaction. Light, light work though, a little bit. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Why are you shaking? Anyway. Okay, third and final question. What do you guys wanna do career-wise after high school? Um, I plan on going to school for the next 12 years um, to become an anesthesiologist. Yeah. Um, Ooh, I plan okay. on moving down to Texas with my um, wonderful friend. Um, and uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm planning to major in sports broadcasting, hopefully be in a big stage like ESPN, NBA TV, hopefully, and probably attending Jackson State University or Howard University. Yes. I'm gonna do it this way. Oh shoot, so, oh scare, my stomach already hurts. Chicken. My stomach already hurts, Ooh. bro. What the heck, Zai? My stomach hurts, y'all. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. I thought about it. Wait. Wait. <coughs> Wait. That's not that bad. <coughs> it's cold, it's cold, it's cold. Do you guys want to drink? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Cheers. And that does it for today's show.
We will be back next week with more FNN, but until then, make sure to follow us on Instagram and subscribe to Falcon News Network on YouTube, where you can catch sports live streams, previous episodes, and other great content. Plus, check the posters around the school to tune in for our radio station and check out our Spotify podcasting channel. We'll see you back here next week.